Mantis shrimp. Mantis shrimp, or stomatopods, are carnivorous marine crustaceans of the order Stomatopoda, branching from other members of the class Malacostraca around 340 million years ago. Mantis shrimps typically grow to around 10 cm in length, while a few can reach up to 38 cm. A mantis shrimp's carapace, the hard, thick shell that covers crustaceans and some other species, covers only the rear part of the head and the first four segments of the thorax. Varieties range in color from shades of brown to vivid colors, with more than 450 species of mantis shrimps being known. They are among the most important predators in many shallow, tropical and subtropical marine habitats. However, despite being common, they are poorly understood, as many species spend most of their lives tucked away in burrows and holes. Called sea locusts by ancient Assyrians, prawn killers in Australia, and now sometimes referred to as thumb splitters because of the animal's ability to inflict painful wounds if handled incautiously, mantis shrimps have powerful raptorials that are used to attack and kill prey either by spearing, stunning, or dismembering. Some mantis shrimp species have specialized calcified clubs that can strike with great power, while others have sharp forelimbs used to seize the prey, hence the term mantis in its common name. Ecology. About 450 species of mantis shrimps have been discovered worldwide, all living species are in the suborder Unipeltata, which arose around 193 million years ago. These aggressive and typically solitary sea creatures spend most of their time hiding in rock formations or burrowing intricate passageways in the seabed. They rarely exit their homes except to feed and relocate, and can be active during the day, nocturnal, or active primarily at twilight, depending on the species. Unlike most crustaceans, they sometimes hunt, chase, and kill prey. Although some live in temperate seas, most species live in tropical and subtropical waters in the Indian and Pacific Oceans between eastern Africa and Hawaii. Claws. The mantis shrimp's second pair of thoracic appendages has been highly adapted for powerful close-range combat. The appendage differences divide mantis shrimp into two main types, those that hunt by impaling their prey with spear-like structures and those that smash prey with a powerful blow from a heavily mineralized club-like appendage. A considerable amount of damage can be inflicted after impact with these robust, hammer-like claws. This club is further divided into three subregions, the impact region, the periodic region, and the striated region. Mantis shrimp are commonly separated into two distinct groups determined by the type of claws they possess. Smashers possess a much more developed club and a more rudimentary spear, which is nevertheless quite sharp and still used in fights between their own kind, the club is used to bludgeon and smash their meals apart. The inner aspect of the terminal portion of the appendage can also possess a sharp edge, used to cut prey while the mantis shrimp swims. Spearers are armed with spiny appendages topped with barbed tips, used to stab and snag prey. Both types strike by rapidly unfolding and swinging their raptorial claws at the prey, and can inflict serious damage on victims significantly greater in size than themselves. In smashes, these two weapons are employed with blinding quickness, with an acceleration of 10,400 grams, 102,000 meters per square second or 335,000 feet per square second, and speeds of 23 meters per second, 83 kilometers per hour, 51 miles per hour, from a standing start. Because they strike so rapidly, they generate vapor-filled bubbles in the water between the appendage and the striking surface, known as cavitation bubbles. The collapse of these cavitation bubbles produces measurable forces on their prey in addition to the instantaneous forces of 1,500 newtons that are caused by the impact of the appendage against the striking surface, which means that the prey is hit twice by a single strike. First by the claw and then by the collapsing cavitation bubbles that immediately follow. Even if the initial strike misses the prey, the resulting shock wave can be enough to stun or kill. Smashers use this ability to attack snails, crabs, mollusks, and rock oysters, their blunt clubs enabling them to crack the shells of their prey into pieces. Spearers, however, prefer the meat of softer animals, such as fish, which their barbed claws can more easily slice and snag. The appendages are being studied as a microscale analog for new macroscale material structures. Eyes. The eyes of the mantis shrimp are mounted on mobile stalks and can move independently of each other. They are thought to have the most complex eyes in the animal kingdom and have the most complex visual system ever discovered. 
Compared with the three types of photoreceptor cells that humans possess in their eyes, the eyes of a mantis shrimp have between 12 and 16 types of photoreceptor cells. Furthermore, some of these shrimp can tune the sensitivity of their long wavelength color vision to adapt to their environment. This phenomenon, called spectral tuning, is species-specific. Cheros et al. did not observe spectral tuning in Neogonodactylus ursidae, the species with the most monotonous natural photic environment. In N. bredini, a species with a variety of habitats ranging from a depth of 5 to 10 meters, although it can be found down to 20 meters below the surface, spectral tuning was observed, but the ability to alter wavelengths of maximum absorbance was not as pronounced as in N. wenerae, a species with much higher ecological, photic habitat diversity. The diversity of spectral tuning in stomatopoda is also hypothesized to be directly linked to mutations on the opsin gene's chromophore binding pocket. Despite the impressive range of wavelengths that mantis shrimp have the ability to see, they do not have the ability to discriminate wavelengths less than 25 nanometers apart. It is suggested that not discriminating between closely positioned wavelengths allows these organisms to make determinations of its surroundings with little processing delay. Having little delay in evaluating surroundings is important for mantis shrimp, since they are territorial and frequently in combat. Each compound eye is made up of tens of thousands of omatidia, clusters of photoreceptor cells. Each eye consists of two flattened hemispheres separated by parallel rows of specialized omatidia, collectively called the midband. The number of omatidial rows in the midband ranges from two to six. This divides the eye into three regions. This configuration enables mantis shrimp to see objects with three parts of the same eye. In other words, each eye possesses trinocular vision, and therefore depth perception. The upper and lower hemispheres are used primarily for recognition of form and motion, like the eyes of many other crustaceans. Mantis shrimp can perceive wavelengths of light ranging from deep ultraviolet UVB, to far red and polarized light. In mantis shrimp in the superfamilies Gonodactyloidea, Lysioscheloidea, and Hemoscheloidea, the midband is made up of six omatodial rows. Rows 1 to 4 process colors, while rows 5 and 6 detect circularly or linearly polarized light. Twelve types of photoreceptor cells are in rows 1 to 4, four of which detect ultraviolet light. Rows 1 to 4 of the midband are specialized for color vision, from deep ultraviolet to far red. Their UV vision can detect five different frequency bands in the deep ultraviolet. To do this, they use two photoreceptors in combination with four different color filters. They are not currently believed to be sensitive to infrared light. The optical elements in these rows have eight different classes of visual pigments and the rhabdom area of eye that absorbs light from a single direction is divided into three different pigmented layers tiers, each for different wavelengths. The three tiers in rows 2 and 3 are separated by color filters, interabdominal filters, that can be divided into four distinct classes, two classes in each row. It is organized like a sandwich, a tier, a color filter of one class, a tier again, a color filter of another class, and then a last tier. These color filters allow the mantis shrimp to see with diverse color vision. Without the filters, the pigments themselves range only a small segment of the visual spectrum, about 490 to 550 nanometers. Rows 5 and 6 are also segregated into different tiers, but have only one class of visual pigment, the ninth class, and are specialized for polarization vision. Depending upon the species, they can detect circularly polarized light, linearly polarized light, or both. A tenth class of visual pigment is found in the upper and lower hemispheres of the eye. Some species have at least 16 photoreceptor types, which are divided into four classes. Their spectral sensitivity is further tuned by color filters in the retinas, 12 for color analysis in the different wavelengths, including six which are sensitive to ultraviolet light, and four for analyzing polarized light. By comparison, most humans have only four visual pigments, of which three are dedicated to see color, and human lenses block ultraviolet light. The visual information leaving the retina seems to be processed into numerous parallel data streams leading into the brain, greatly reducing the analytical requirements at higher levels. Six species of mantis shrimp have been reported to be able to detect circularly polarized light, which has not been documented in any other animal, and whether it is present across all species is unknown. 
Some of their biological quarter wave plates perform more uniformly over the visual spectrum than any current man-made polarizing optics, and this could inspire new types of optical media that would outperform the current generation of Blu-ray disc technology. The species Gonodactylus smithii is the only organism known to simultaneously detect the four linear and two circular polarization components required to measure all four Stokes parameters, which yield a full description of polarization. It is thus believed to have optimal polarization vision. It is the only animal known to have dynamic polarization vision. This is achieved by rotational eye movements to maximize the polarization contrast between the object in focus and its background. Since each eye moves independently from the other, it creates two separate streams of visual information. The midband covers only about 5 to 10 degrees of the visual field at any given instant, but like most crustaceans, mantis shrimp's eyes are mounted on stalks. In mantis shrimps, the movement of the stalked eye is unusually free, and can be driven up to 70 degrees in all possible axes of movement by eight eye cup muscles divided into six functional groups. By using these muscles to scan the surroundings with the midband, they can add information about forms, shapes, and landscape, which cannot be detected by the upper and lower hemispheres of the eyes. They can also track moving objects using large, rapid eye movements where the two eyes move independently. By combining different techniques, including movements in the same direction, the midband can cover a very wide range of the visual field. The huge diversity seen in mantis shrimp photoreceptors likely comes from ancient gene duplication events. One interesting consequence of this duplication is the lack of correlation between opsin transcript number and physiologically expressed photoreceptors. One species may have six different opsin genes, but only express one spectrally distinct photoreceptor. Over the years, some mantis shrimp species have lost the ancestral phenotype, although some still maintain 16 distinct photoreceptors and 4 light filters. Species that live in a variety of photic environments have high selective pressure for photoreceptor diversity, and maintain ancestral phenotypes better than species that live in murky waters or are primarily nocturnal. Thanks for watching.